Welcome into K-State Online. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you back yet again today. Just uh, the news cycle keeps rolling on. This one a little bit more of a positive nugget throughout the uh, brutal week that it's been for K-State fans out there. K-State releasing a, a, a very nice, well-thought-through video with K-State logos and from the K-State football account, not a personal account, not personal branding logos of Avery Johnson announcing the switch to jersey number two. We anticipated that this would likely happen when Jake Rubley uh, left the program. What we didn't anticipate was that there would be a lot of questions about is Avery Johnson going to be the quarterback at K-State next year because of Colin Klein leaving for Texas A&M and you know, the offense and the coaching staff being thrown into disarray. It would appear, uh, for the time being, Avery Johnson is not going anywhere, and that's a good sign for K-State and for a lot of different reasons that you appear to uh, have Avery Johnson on board moving forward. Yeah, I I think this is like you at least – you. I think this kind of commitment video, recommitment video or PR stunt, so to speak, to, you know, temper some of the anxiety that's out there is, one, it's wise. Two, it's probably more so that he's at least here through the bowl game. Because I keep saying that there is a lot of time between now and January 2nd when the portal closes. So I don't think you can ever feel 100% okay. But I think you're at least okay through December 28th. So I think you've erased a good chunk of the time that you have to wait until that day. It's this between that and January 2nd, then you still may wonder a little bit. So that's where I am at in this whole thing. I think it, I I think it probably means he's here until next season through next season, but I'm just not going to count my chickens too much before they're hatched because college football, college sports in general, is very volatile right now. Like right, it's the same thing when I said when I when we saw the Jalen Daniels video, right? It's like eh, we'll wait and see, right? No, I think KU's fine. I think Jalen Daniels is probably staying there, but this is the same situation. You should feel good. You shouldn't feel like it's over though. Yeah, I, that and I think that's a good thing to remind people because that's that's where I'm at as well with this. It's you know it wasn't like an overwhelming and resounding like, hey, I'm back, we're in, we're ready to go. But it does show that there is a commitment and and more so than anything, we talked about it this morning. But I, I think Avery Johnson and his camp, I think they desperately want it to work at K State. But there has to be when you have a, a player of his caliber and talent level. You have to you have to check some boxes here, and it's you know there are a lot of different things in the world of college sports right now that doesn't involve the actual on field on court side of things. But I think right now one of the major things is the on field stuff. Like you want to make sure if you're Avery Johnson and anybody that's advising him that you're in a position where you've got coaches that are going to set you up best to in two or three years from now have an opportunity to to go to the NFL and you want to be able to showcase yourself in the best way possible for the skill sets that they are looking for. And, and so there are a lot of different ways that that can be portrayed. And I, I think K-State is probably going to do their best job to make sure that this situation is handled with the best interest of the team and the best interest of Avery Johnson in mind. But um, it makes sense that, you know, there, there are going to be some things that K-State is going to have to work hard to achieve and we'll see, uh, how this process plays out. I mean, we've talked about how the hunt for a coordinator and and a quarterback's coach is looking right now, but those are probably going to be some of the most important hires that Chris Kleiman ever has to make. Not just the fact that you have to find a way to replace a guy that was really talented at what he did in Colin Klein, but because of what the ramifications of getting it wrong could be and the fact that, like, like you're saying, you don't have a lot of time to make it right because – the portal closes on the second. Your bowl game is on the twenty eighth. Um, you you got to make sure that that everything is buttoned up by the time the the zeros hit the clock in Orlando because there's minimal days left. And uh, once something becomes final, it's final. So we'll we'll have to monitor it. Yeah, and rightfully so. But I believe, you know, his camp has kind of said this all along. So this is not a surprise. But he doesn't want to be viewed as a running back or he doesn't want to be viewed as a, a guy that is a runner that can pass a little. He wants to be a passer. 
He wants to be known as a quarterback that can really throw the ball. And when push comes to shove, he can hurt you with your leg with his legs as well. And quite frankly, I think he was getting concerned about some of the offensive, the, about the image of the offense this past year. I think he was uh, so. I think those concerns would have been would have existed now, even if Colin Klein was the offensive coordinator. But I think that's going to be a benchmark that has to be hit for him to feel comfortable with his future in Kansas State's hands and Chris Kleiman's hands. So their approach to how they use the quarterback is going to be paramount. The offense coordinator hire is going to be paramount. And the quarterback coach hire is going to be paramount. And I think he was probably already been made aware of those plans during meetings and stuff of that nature. So we'll, we'll see if not can't say it's stupid if they don't, keep all of us in mind. And I, I realize Chris Klein is the head coach and he's going to do what he wants, um, how he thinks he has to do things to be successful. But the but the easiest path to be successful is to keep your star quarterback in mind as well. So I, I hope those things don't have to run parallel to one another. I hope that they can intersect and be cohesive at the same time. So we'll see where that lies. I don't think we're going to have an immediate conclusion on who the quarterback coach or office coordinator is going to be. And, you know, who knows uh, how it goes from here. Now, the quarterback coach part, the only thing I, I can understand not having an offensive coordinator at this time to an extent. Um, I, personally, I think you should you, – Going <laughs> outside and getting one would be my uh, preference, but I can understand not necessarily doing that, at least from a recruiting standpoint. I don't think that's problematic at this point when you got m most or all of the position coaches settled. But here's the thing. The quarterback coach, do you want to get that settled? Because you probably want to sign Blake Barnett. That's the tricky spot here. Because if they want to use the bull game as a trial run, they technically have to leave one spot open in case they want to go outside and hire an offensive coordinator after the bull game. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And I didn't even really think of, about that because, yeah, you, you can't go out and hire a quarterback coach if you feel like you also are going to need to go out and get an offensive coordinator or I mean, it's, or somebody else ends up on the chopping block that you were not anticipating, and I just don't see that being the style of of Chris Kleiman. I mean, or or there could be another exit in the works that we're not aware of too. True. Like Colin, Colin Klein just left, so something to think about. Yeah, that's true. And there are still you know plenty of days until the bowl game. Now there are less days until National Signing Day, so uh, that will probably be a significant thing to watch and and we'll see how it kind of plays out but for the time being it seems like Avery Johnson is here to stay for K-State just gonna have to uh continue to moderate it and hope that things play out the way that uh are are best for not only the Wildcats but also Avery Johnson so everybody can stay in this uh in this situation that's worked out pretty well so far but uh the Colin Klein thing threw a wrench in it and now an opportunity to either make things better like you're saying where maybe there was some concern about what Colin Klein would do in the offense with Avery Johnson's legs next year. So maybe you can strengthen the the tie and the bond, um, but also certainly you have to make sure you get it right because you don't want to sour and, and mess this thing up uh, at all. But honestly, if for people that are looking for something good, just knowing that Avery Johnson is going to be here come tomorrow is a massive win. Uh, with everything else going on around K-State right now. And it gives you that opportunity to continue to grow the relationship and put yourself in a good spot. So, And, and maybe it's the paranoia in me of the uh, last couple of days, seeing a lot of negative things happen that I'm still not uh, 100% sold and I won't be until the uh, portal entry date closes. But for the time being, I'll, I'll take this good news like everybody else should and uh, be ready to support Avery Johnson and – Probably just continue to order the Avery Johnson jerseys for your kids like you are for Christmas, I'm sure. So just make sure you get the number two. Or, hey, 
call up one of the, the stores and ask for a discount if you're getting a number five jersey because I'm sure they're still printed and you can go and grab them and say, hey, look, I'm not even wearing this number anymore. Can I get that for a, a decent price? Because, uh, you know, you'll at least always get to be the guy with the uh, freshman Avery Johnson jersey. Uh, or 10 years from now, an idiot like me will be like, you, got, you rocking an Alex Delton jersey right there? Uh, so there you go. Uh, anything else on the K-State football front before things change within, within the next hour, two hours, 24 hours? Because uh, that seems to be the news cycle right now for K-State. I don't think so this time. All right. Well, we will see. If anything does change or happen, you can go over to kstateonline.com. Just find us at on three, get set up with everything there and continue to uh, consume the content on the YouTube as well. Plenty of information flowing and lots of good insight, especially since we've got a K-State basketball game, game coming up in a couple of days uh, against LSU that all of a sudden has a lot of other things going into it other than just playing a road basketball game. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State Online.